So my palette is very, very simple. It's a white, a yellow ochre, a red oxide, a dark brown, and a black. So the first step is I'm going to draw a contour drawing of my apple to give myself the placement of where I want to start building my watercolor underlayer, okay? And so I'm looking for inner contour and outer contour. I'm trying to delineate the shape. I can go in and try to find some of the detail of this shape if I see that. But ultimately, I'm looking for just basically a chance to map out my area of where I'm going to lay the color. I have my watercolor palette and I have a cup of water. And what I'm gonna do is charge up this, it's a fairly opaque red. Now you could work with watercolor or you could actually work with gouache if you wanna even go more opaque. This is a cadmium red or a naphthol red. So it's quite opaque and it will cover that sheet of gray pretty effectively. What I'm gonna do is charge up some color. We wanna make a nice solution and I'm gonna lay this down and I'm just gonna flood it and float it. Now, we try to work with gravity downhill if we can, and we try to flow that color briskly so that it has a chance to lay over the surface and give that surface a nice, nice even tonation of color. If I want, some apples have variational color, so maybe I wanna go in and I wanna add some of the colorational stripes that we might see in an apple, but I don't wanna worry about the form. I'm gonna build the form with drawing. So I rinsed my brush and I'm gonna squeeze my brush and I'm gonna use it to make sure that I pick up any of what we call the bead of our wet media. So what I like to do is work first with my darks and then with my lights. So I'm gonna start with a black charcoal pencil and I'm gonna start bringing in some shadowing in areas where I'd like the shadow to occur. Just like with any other drawing, I'm treating this as a toned piece of paper, but in the case of this toned paper, the tone is now red. I'm gonna set the black down and I'm gonna actually jump to my white and I'm gonna start modeling towards the highlight. So we talk about this in modeling. We start with a flat shape and to give it roundness, we're going to attack the deep shadow and let the deep shadow drift into the model of the shape. And then we're gonna attack the high point where the highlight would be. In this case, it's right here on the apple. And we're going to then take that white and model it in to what's around it. And so as I do this again, and I work with very thin and just barely touched areas of the white, what we start to develop is a feeling that because the red is there and the red is coming through some of those very light and transparent whites, it feels like I have a variety of tints of red all painted in this area, but I'm really just working with only one color on top of another. I'm gonna go back to my simple palette set up and I have white and then a yellow ochre and then a red brown and then a dark brown and a black. Interestingly, when I mix the black and white together, it's going to bring out a feeling of a coldness or a blue. So I'm looking at my apple and I notice that the area of reflected light feels a little bit cold and not quite as warm. So I'm gonna start by adding some black into that shadow space. And this is how we take advantage of multiple options with just a few colors. I'm going to mimic the feeling of blue by going over that black with some of the white. And when I do, you're gonna probably notice a coolness starts to develop in that area of reflected light. Now, the red that I put down was a very warm red and I have a red brown that's also fairly warm. And so if I work this red brown into areas of the drawing, I can bring out some of the warmth. So for instance, if I want that to happen, I need to 
brighten up the area with some white first. Now the white is gonna make the area that I'm about to draw feel a little bit chalky and almost clammy would be the best way to put it. But I'm gonna come back over that white with some of this warmer red and it's going to warm that area back up and make it feel like it has the right temperature for the space that it's living in. Additionally, I can put down some, some more white back over that, and when I do, the pastel is gonna start mixing together the red-brown that I put down, that warm red-brown and the white, and it's gonna start making additional colors. I can then go with my yellow-brown and bring that over again and now that's really gonna warm up the area. When we began, the red has a certain value. And in terms of modeling, I need to think about where that red lives as a value so that I know whether or not the work I'm gonna do is gonna pop out or, or marry in. So a good example would be this. If I take the red-brown Conte and I draw it right into this area here, on that red and I'm gonna put a nice saturated layer, you notice probably that it barely shows up because these two values, the original red and the red-brown Conte are roughly the same. You can see that as I hold it over the palette. If you squint your eyes at my red-brown Conte on top of the color from my palette, the red-brown seems to blend in. That means that they have the same value. If on the other hand, I move to my yellow ochre and I hold it over and squint, you can see that the yellow ochre is clearly a lighter value, which means if I use that again in this area, it will make the color pop out because the color that I'm using is brighter than what's underneath it. I'm gonna finish off with my dark brown, and the dark brown is gonna be used to tie together my black areas with my undertones of the red. So places that I want the black to be a little less aggressive, I can glaze over them with some brown and give them a little warmth. And I can help use that brown to turn edges in places where I want to turn those edges but I don't want to turn them into a black edge. I want to turn them into a moderated edge. Now what's interesting again, when we mix black and white together, we ended up with what felt like a blue. If I mix black and yellow together, I'm going to bring out a feeling of green with some yellow. So I'm seeing a lot of green on the inside right here. So I'm going to go with some yellow and I'm going to work some black back over that yellow. to bring out a feeling of a green. The ultimate lesson here is that if I start with just a single red underneath, I can get the feeling of quite a lot of color with very few.